Asus was one of the first companies to kick off the low-cost smartphone war in India with the original Zenfone 4, 5 and 6 way back in 2014, all of which were quite popular. Since then, the company has tried various strategies targeting different markets and some increasingly specific niches, but none of those models wound up as successful. Now Asus is looking to reinvent itself with the same original strategy, offering lots of features and specifications at rock bottom prices. This is a strategy that's worked for lots of companies, but it gets harder and harder to pull off each time. The new Zenfone Max Pro M1 was developed and customized especially for India, and we've been able to spend some time with the pre-sale unit prior to its launch. Here's everything you need to know, but before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to be notified of all our new videos. First of all, this is a very good looking phone. It's built pretty well with a metal backplate and there are no rough edges or other problems. Even the camera module on the rear doesn't protrude. It's a bit thick at 8.61mm and heavy at 180 grams, and you won't be able to reach all parts of the screen with one thumb. The rear isn't slippery, but on the other hand, it does get smudged quite easily. The thickness and weight come from the fact that there's a 5000mAh battery inside this phone, which is one of its biggest selling points. You also get a pretty powerful Qualcomm Snapdragon 636 processor. The Max Pro M1 will be available with either 3GB of RAM and 32GB of storage, or 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. There's a dual SIM tray on the left with a separate cutout for a micro SD card. You can only use 4G on one SIM at a time, while the other will work at 3G speed. Fulti is supported as well. There's also single band Wi-Fi N and Bluetooth 5. You get a 5.99 inch screen with an 18 by 9 aspect ratio, rounded corners and relatively thin borders. It's bright enough for outdoor use and colors are quite vibrant. Viewing angles are also pretty good. There's a night mode as well as manual color temperature adjustment. One big surprise with the Zenfone Max Pro M1 is that Asus has ditched its custom Zen UI and apps in favor of stock Android. There's still a little bloatware, but it's manageable. A lot of Android fans will love this and we're happy too. Asus has promised that facial recognition will be added in an update that rolls out just before this phone goes on sale, but our early review unit didn't have it. The single speaker on the bottom can get really loud, but music distorts pretty badly at full volume. There's no headset in the box, but Asus does throw in this cardboard stand called the Max Box, which helps redirect sound. It doesn't have a huge effect and you can't use it when watching video in landscape, but it is a handy little accessory. Streaming video is enjoyable and games run smoothly. Overall, this is a great phone for entertainment. General performance is also pretty impressive thanks to the hardware you get, and we didn't face any trouble at all with the apps we used for testing. Benchmark scores are very high for a phone at this price level thanks to the Snapdragon 636 processor. Other than Xiaomi's Redmi Note 5 and Redmi Note 5 Pro, this phone doesn't have much competition at all in its price band. Now we come to camera performance, which is where low-cost phones usually struggle the most. Asus has outfitted the Zenfone Max Pro M1 with a 13 megapixel camera and a 5 megapixel depth sensor at the rear. On the front, there's an 8 megapixel camera with its own flash. Video recording goes up to 4K with the rear camera and 1080p with the front one. In the daytime, the shots we took with the Zenfone Max Pro M1 were quite vibrant with colors that popped nicely. Some details and textures at a distance weren't all that sharp, but close ups fared relatively well in this regard. The depth mode produced visible results with smooth gradients between the foreground and background. At night, details get a little fuzzy and it takes much longer to lock focus, but things are largely under control. Video taken during the day and at night was usable, but there was a lot of focus shifting. Asus has promised some camera quality improvements with software updates that should be ready by the time anyone buys this phone, but even as it stands during our review, the Zenfone Max Pro M1 is pretty decent. Battery life was pretty good and we were able to get through a full day with a lot of video streaming and some time playing games. You get a 10 watt charger, but there's no official support for quick charging. There's no doubt that Asus is aiming directly for Xiaomi's Redmi Note 5 and Redmi Note 5 Pro with this phone. So far, no other company has managed to match the Chinese giant's prices and specifications, but Asus has made a solid effort. The Zenfone Max Pro M1 will be available exclusively on Flipkart, and we're told that we won't have to deal with flash sales, which is a relief. With this kind of pricing and performance, buyers with limited budgets now have another great option to choose from. Thanks for watching, and for more reviews and videos like this, do visit us at gadgets360.com.